أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي سعى من يطي الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعسهما فإنه قد غوى وإنه لا يدر إلا نفسه ولا يدر الله شيئا إن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن خير الأمور أوازمها والشر الأمور مهدساتها وكل مهدسة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد إن الله لا يستحيي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعودة فما فوقها Dear brother, this is the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah and this is ayah number 26. And Allah Ta'ala in this ayah is giving a message which is very relevant in the current circumstances, especially with the COVID-19 epidemic which is there. And Allah says, In Allah la yastahi Behold, God does not disdain an yadriba masalam ma ba'udatan to propound or give the example of a mosquito or a small insect a gnat for example fama fawqaha or something even more than that even above it Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed in Mecca and at that time among many objections to the revelation of the Quran and the message of the Quran was one of the big objections that Allah Ta'ala was giving example of things in the Quran which people did not seem to appreciate and among all the big creations of Allah, Allah Ta'ala has made massive creatures like the elephants and the giraffes and the tigers and the lions the kuffar of Mecca, the people of Mecca, they found it very hard to understand why Allah has chosen the example of a mosquito, of a small insect. And there are many examples in the Quran. Uh, there's an example about the flies, example about the ants and the honeybees. And Allah says that he has no hesitation, no disdain to give examples of a small insect like a mosquito. Or even something more than that, means even something smaller than that and tinier than that. Because the glory and amazement of the creation of Allah does not need to be measured by the size of the creature. And to, throughout the history of mankind, Allah has shown again and again and mentioned in the Quran how Allah's small creatures can bring about collapse of really big empires and big people. I would quote four examples from here. Uh, these four examples are from the distant history and the more recent history. And the first example is that of a king called Nimrud, who was a king of Babylon. And he was a great king, a mighty king who did not believe in God. And Allah subjected him to the test by a disease caused by a mosquito. And when you read the historical accounts and see the signs and symptoms of that disease, you come to realize that he was suffering from a condition known as encephalitis. And that is spread by a virus which is carried by a mosquito. And that great powerful king who did not think anyone could compete with him succumbed to an illness caused by a small insect. أَنْ يَذْرَبَ مَسْلًا مَا بَعُودَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا 
this is the ayah which is telling us this that he can give allah can give you an example of how great things could be achieved by very small tiny creatures just like a mosquito or even smaller than that like the microorganisms which you cannot see the second example around the time of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that of a time when before his birth mecca was invaded by the abyssinian army and this army came from yemen the king was an abyssinian known as abraha and he brought great amounts of elephants and great amounts of army with him it was something totally unprecedented and unheard of that someone can pick up these elephants from the jungles of africa which was quite convenient for the abyssinians to do but then transport them over to yemen and then led them through the desert all the way to mecca uh, in history very few people have achieved a feat like this we know of hannibal who crossed the alps with an elephant and that was a great achievement and abraha had done something much similar to hannibal and probably at a more difficult scale because during the summer times and during the long dry days of the desert it was difficult for the elephants to have food and water available and this massive army when it reached near mecca it was attacked by birds now historians have commented on it and they've said how come birds would come to a far off place like mecca in the middle of the desert and where would they find the food and why would they flock to that area but interestingly every few decades there's heavy rainfall in the arabian peninsula and the most latest one was in the winter of 2018 and 2019 and whenever there's heavy rainfall in the desert it blooms and there's a lot of vegetation all around it totally transforms into a different landscape and that brings insects from all over to feed on the greenery and the insects they attract a lot of birds who come to feed on the insects and the same thing happened in 2019 in January and February there were swarms of locusts and other insects around the Kaaba and in Medina so much so that they had to be fumigated and they had to use insecticides to kill them and there were swarms of birds especially long-tailed ababil birds which were flying around and feeding on these insects and we know from historical record the same thing had happened around the time of Abraha's attack at the grandfather of the holy prophet he went to intercede on behalf of the Quraysh to Abraha and he offered him a big proportion of the crops that the Meccans had recently grown now in the desert crops are very rare but it clearly indicates that that was an unusual time in the desert when there was a lot of rainfall and a lot of crops were available and he offered them as compensation for him not to attack Mecca of course uh, Abraha did not listen to it and he was not interested in it he wanted to attack the kaaba and destroy the kaaba and at that time when these birds came they brought with them small pebbles which would drop from a very high altitude and when these pebbles would hit the army they would cause damage to the skin and create wounds and at the same time some of the mufassirin of the quran and some of the historians like ibn ishaq and the mahrishi and uh, other historians they have said that it was the same time when insect born diseases something they call a hasba which is similar to the disease of typhus caused by bacterium uh, rickettsia they were spread among the arabs and it was not only the pebbles dropping from the sky which were injuring the people but it was also the spread of the swarms of insects which had infected those infecting those wounds and causing death and destruction among abraha's army and from the hadith we know that abraha and some of his army men did survive and went back to yemen but they were never allowed to enter into the capital and allah gave them enough opportunity to go back so people of yemen could see that what great curse they are going to face if they try another attack on mecca So this was the second time which is mentioned in the Quran in history where this microorganism and small creatures of Allah the insects which Allah calls ba'uda and says even he can give an example of beyond them 
they could bring down a massive army and a massive power, powerful king. Later in history, uh, the same has happened to Napoleon's army, which marched all the way from France to Russia. And in Russia, they had a spread of typhus, and the typhus destroyed Napoleon's army and his ambitions to conquer Russia. And more recently, we have the COVID-19. And how relevant it is to this uh, ayah from the Quran that Allah says that his greatness lies even in the smallest of his creations. If you look around you with this COVID-19 epidemic, we have a shutdown of the whole human society. People are afraid. They are afraid to meet each other. And for good reason, we have to protect ourselves. And at the same time, our factories are closed. Productions are closed, cars are in the garages, fuel consumption has gone down, and the environment is much cleaner. Something which none of the other animals and species could achieve in this, in this planet to dissuade humans from destroying the environment. A small microorganism, a small virus has achieved that. And so swiftly and so quickly. And we've learned our lesson at how vulnerable we are. So it's not the size of the creature, but it is the glory of Allah. It's the power of Allah which is manifested through it, which is more important. And Allah can manifest his powers and his plans to anything. So it's a time for us to learn, because if you continue with this ayah, and Allah says, and I continue from the start, in the Allah la yastahyi an yadrib masalam ma ba'udatan fa ma fawkaha fa amma allazina amanu and for those who have attained faith, they know that it is a truth from the sustainer, that even a small creature can convince you of the glory and mightiness of Allah. And those who are bent on denying the truth, they say, what could God mean by this parable, by this example? In this way, Allah guides many and many go astray. And nobody goes astray except those who are iniquitous. So this is a message from the Quran that Allah Ta'ala's signs are there for us everywhere. All we have to do is open up our eyes and see and appreciate them. And in this difficult time, we have to be safe, but we also have to hold to our faith. And inshallah, may Allah help us survive this difficult time. Because when you read Surah about uh, the elephants, and the attack of Abraha, Surah Al-Fil. The next following surah is Surah Al-Quraysh, which is full of hope and love, where Allah says, Li Quraishin, saif, that Allah has protected the Quraysh, and for their protection, he had shown this miracle of the army of elements, elephants being destroyed. So you should follow and you should worship that God who gives you protection in fear and who feeds you in hunger. Now again, a very important message. In times of turmoil, when outbreaks occur like this, what are the two things that concern us the most? Number one, provision of food. We forget about our mobiles and cars and international holidays and big camper wins, vans, all we are concerned about is provision of food. And that's where you see this rush to the shops. You see this madness of hoarding food and other essentials of life. And then the next thing is fear, the fear of suffering and the fear of death. And these two are the basic human instincts at a time of turmoil. And Allah has mentioned them in the Quran. And he said at that time, have your faith in Allah and he will protect you.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الامين اما بعد فيا معشر المسلمين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد بعدد من قاد وقام اللهم صل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى سائر الصحابه والتابعين وعلى عبادك الصالحين اللهم ايد الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم نصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ثبتنا على الاسلام اللهم نفر قلوبنا بنور الايمان اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى وعز وجل واتم وحم اكبر ان شاء الله ويل كونتينيو ذس سيريز اوف خطبات في الجمعه ريموتلي ان شاء الله تيل ثينجز جيت بيتر اف يو هاف تو ثري بيبل ات هوم يو كان هاف ا جماعه صلاه في الجمعه اند اذر ديز تو اند ان شاء الله اف بوسيبل ديورينج رمضان we'll try to have a sitting every night and uh, go through the tafsir of quran right now we're doing <coughs> surah al-kahf and we're at a point where the story of musa alayhi salam and khidr is uh, starting and uh, there are some very interesting aspects of it and how this story from the quran has influenced the islamic faith and how that influence has differed from one muslim country to another how it affected iran how the goddess anahita and the god of green tree got mixed up with the character of khidr alayhi salam and how in the indian subcontinent uh, the gods of water got labeled with uh, the identity of khidr alayhi salam and how that impacted the understanding of the people in that region and what myths were created around it and again the surah al-kahf the main message of surah al-kahf is that quran is very clear about things and has very factual and if you follow it to the word you can disc- discrean between what is the fact of the quran and what are the legends and the stories which will later crop crop up so inshallah next uh, khutbah we will be talking about it and we'll endeavor to continue the tafsir of surah al-kahf and then start with another surah inshallah during ramadan jazakallah khair and please do give your feedback uh, if there's any way to improve it inshallah and as soon as the situation improves inshallah ta'ala we'll be resuming the juma khutbah as before shukran jazakallah khair